defense uh, in the medical services, uh, we, we've been able to use simulation to assure our capability for a number of years. And it's the, seen as the, uh, as the pinnacle of assurance before projecting our forces overseas to deliver patient care. So some of the latest advances surround uh, the utilization of virtual and augmented reality. Uh, just over my shoulder, you may be able to pick up some of the work that we're doing currently with Birmingham University and Professor uh, Bob Stone, where we're trying to create a MERT simulator, so the helicopter platform for consultant-led care. That methodology was so successful in saving patients' lives in Afghanistan. And to be able to take this platform of training forward uh, to utilize virtual and mixed reality, we think is, uh, is something for the future. I think it's really important that we look where we've been, we look at the success we've had through simulation, and certainly if we reflect back to 18 months ago in Op Grit Rock and the pressures that, of delivering um, patient care in the most robust, arduous of environments and the rigor of a West African jungle against the Cat4 pathogen, uh, the most virulent disease in the world, we use simulation to assure that capability. We already have the Army Medical Services Training Center based in York, which does deployed hospital assurance, but we're looking at different sorts of simulation, whether that be high fidelity in the micro sphere or taking it up to the meso uh, simulation field where we're assessing teams and departments, or looking at the micro simulation where we're looking at a whole system end to end, the physics and chemistry of, uh, of a capability. Um, so if we get this project through the gate, um, it's a really exciting future for Defence Medical Services simulation going forward.